guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on the Forgotten Weapons Library. I'm Ian, and today the book I have is The Whitney Wolverine by Antonio Taglienti. The Wolverine is an interesting little 22 caliber semi-auto pistol. It's not the sort of thing we normally cover here, but this one has a real interesting history. It was designed by Robert Hilberg back in the 1950s. Uh, Hilberg had another, a number of other interesting projects under his belt. Um, in particular, he designed the Hilberg Carbine which was one of the interesting 30 carbine prototypes that was tested by the military during World War II. Ultimately not accepted, but such is life. Um, Hilbert designed this particular gun in the 1950s, and it has one of the things that's given it some notoriety is it has a very aerospace, uh, atomic age sort of look to it. And on top of that, it was actually a very effective, very well designed, very well thought out pistol. Um, only about 14,000 of these were ever made back in the 50s. It was a design with a lot of promise, but uh, some financial and management decisions on the part of the manufacturing company relegated it to commercial failure, unfortunately. Um, and there are a number of details that make uh, the history of this pistol a little bit obscure. The serial numbers were deliberately chosen to try to obscure the number that were actually being made. and. Um, Taglianti has done a really good job in this book of both through correspondence with Hilberg himself and also through use of a, a survey of a whole bunch of uh, Whitney pistol owners, he's gone back and been able to trace things like the various finishes, the various uh, the changes in production that happened, and all the little details in the pistol that would normally not be, that, that's not information that's available anywhere else. Uh, there are a number of real interesting design features in the, the Whitney. Um, and I should say, it, it was named the Whitney as an homage to Eli Whitney, one of the very earliest uh, American firearms producers. And the gun actually had a number of different names over the course of its life. Uh, the Wolverine, the Whitney, the Lightning, the Hilberg Imperial, and all of those are, are covered in this book, where they came from and how long they lasted and, and what context they were used in. Uh, but it's typically called the Whitney Wolverine today. Uh, and as I was saying, there are a number of real interesting design features in it. The magazine is fairly unusual for a 22, um, and in a good way. Uh, instead of stacking the rims vertically on top of each other, the, the tail end of the magazine is wider than the nose end, and the rims actually stack side to side uh, to prevent rim lock and allow real smooth feeding. So there are a lot of interesting little subtle, clever ideas like that built into this pistol. And as I said, Taglianti has done a really good job of revealing those to the reader, and uh, tracing some of the real interesting aspects of the gun's design. Uh, it, the company went through a bankruptcy and, uh, and moved its location and changed its serial number ranges, and all of that information is well recorded and clearly written out here. So if the, the Whitney is something that you've been interested in, or if you just like the look of the pistol, I think this book is well worth picking up. Unlike the pistols, it is still in print and readily available. There's a link to Amazon below where you can pick up a copy. And uh, I think it's something a lot of people will enjoy. Uh, you can actually also still buy these pistols on Gunbroker. Prices are relatively reasonable. Um, and it'd be a cool addition to anyone's collection. Thanks for watching.